Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach. You remember car videos? Now, this is like embarrassingly dirty. I have a cold. Um, but I have no idea where I am somewhere outside of Dallas. Um, but anyway, I, uh, I, I got a big comic book haul. By the way, sidebar, things are getting freaking insane in comics right now. Some of the stuff I just have to like agree not to talk about it. Um, because these people, oh, so sidebar to my sidebar. If you work for any company, comics company, uh, and you follow me, I would advise you to unfollow me. They're literally combing through my followers, subscribers, past videos, past live streams to get everyone in trouble. I don't think this craziness is going to last longer. Like I said, this is an extinction burst. They're just going nuts trying to destroy everyone to keep their stranglehold on the industry. Um, but, uh, yeah. So, anyway, this is She-Hulk 162, and it's terrible. I, I was going to call this the worst comic I, I ever read, but I'm pretty sure I said that for another issue of uh, She-Hulk back when it was called Hulk. So, the deal is that uh, back when SJW Marvel was at its prime, they were literally hiring, they're like, we, we need to buy Eskimo in a wheelchair, and they just go find someone. They would just go traipsing around. They're like, oh, America Chavez is gay. Let's grab someone who's never read comics who's Hispanic and gay. Uh, I'm not sure why a chubby by semi-Asian Canadian was like the choice for a Hulk at that time, and now it's called She-Hulk, but it was. Mariko Tamaki, she's written some slice of life style like what is it called when you're growing up it's like the story's about growing up coming of age um completely incompetent and and i you know sometimes i come up with a little thesis i kept trying to pull over so i read this and i drove and i was trying to place i kept not being able to pull over they're doing a lot of construction so i was like you know what this is it literally is as it's a substitute teacher teaching your class. Now, um, you know, I was growing up, I watched TV a lot with Brady Bunch, different strokes, all that type of stuff. And you'd always have these like really rascally kids who were always pulling these shenanigans on adults. And I used to tr like try and copy some of the stuff. And it would, it, I always got shut down immediately. But with substitute teachers, you could literally almost reenact a scene from what like some happy days and goof on them and trick them it was, it was pretty much a meme it almost felt like they were just doing it um this is back in the broke old days those substitute teachers are probably getting like 35 dollars for that whole day but anyway yeah this is a, is a substitute so um do you remember two years ago when hawkeye shot bruce banner and killed him maybe two plus years ago the entire run is relating to uh, Jen's trauma after that happened. By the way, her, she actually almost died, so her... I mean, it was her cousin, not her boyfriend. Um, here, okay, so... Uh, Mariko Tamaki is not in superhero comics. What she is really into is eating. Every single issue has been about food. So we start off, we got tea on the boil. You want caffeinate or decaffeinate? What do you got, Flo? Then this old lady, by the way, I got to do a sidebar to my sidebar sidebar about this old lady. Comics is a visual medium. You're supposed to design characters. You just don't draw anyone. If a character is an old lady, she shouldn't look like some old lady in real life that writes like letters to the editor. Or they had this thing like during the State of the Union in San Diego, all of these like really old kind of like cliche like old hippies. We're throwing shoes at a screen. Like it, she looks like one of the women who did that. Um, you're supposed to design characters. Aunt May was not just an old lady. She was designed. She had the little wrinkles around the mouth. She had these giant cheekbones. She had the bun. Like it was supposed to say old, frail, old fashioned. Um, and then she kind of had like not a signature outfit, but the bun was very much you always knew. Um, Mary Jane had. The, uh, the bangs, the kind of like jagged bangs. Uh, Gwen Stacy had a hairband. Even uh, P. 
Peter Parker, he had like this weird hairline that was like a kind of like a widow's peak. It was almost like um, Henry Cavill's hairline. Like it came down to a point in the front. And then later they give him these two little scoops. Like, uh, uh, what do you call them? Four locks. This is nothing. This is just some generic 30-ish woman from Lululemon store and her future lesbian self. Uh, of course, she's got a dog. And then they proceed to list every single thing in her cupboard. I'm glad you asked. I have chamomile, mint chamomile, rooibos, peach snapper, raspberry razzmatazz. Wait. Are these euphemisms for... No. Okay. Um, chocolate mint and a really nice orange zesty. Um, Rasma whatever is good. Okay, let's go sit. This is a Marvel... Ugh! This is a Marvel comic. In 2018. It's a, a bored, sullen, why bitch in a eh, okay drawn kitchen with their future lesbian self, eh, let's say future asexual self, um, slowly describing tea. Uh, then they do this meta stuff where they're like, um, no inner mo monologue, right? Of, okay. So then uh, she gives her a drug and she starts, whoa, that's crazy. She's a floating head. Unnecessary cursing. What the F? By the way, does anyone edit? Editor, Christina Harrington. Fake Geek Girl Alert. This whole thing where you do random punctuation marks is you're supposed to substitute one for every letter. But this exclamation point would just be an exclamation point. So what is she saying? What the ass? What the tits? Like... There's only, there's not a lot of, like, curse words that have three letters. I know. But anyway, um, then she goes, <laughs> I feel like SJWs are all, like, a trick. Um, like, none of them believe it, and they're all actually, like, really hardcore, like, Bible Belt conservative <laughs> Republicans, because they make you hate everything that you're, you 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 should want to like. Like, they should be like, you should like Jen. You should really empathize with her. No. She's a total British slang cuss word. To a T. I also like her weird misshapen head. And like, what the hell is going on? Um, and then she's like, what the tit? I'm a floating head. What is the therapeutic value of that? What do you think the value is? Oh, let me guess. It's a metaphor. She's screaming like a crazy person. What's to stop me from turning you into a metaphor? Hands? Oh, snap! And then she goes, Look, I can be a metaphor too. What do you think? Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. You can't be that bad. Now I'm in Texas. You can't mess with Texas. Seriously. This is a freaking Marvel comic. Like, do you have any standards for, like, what it should be? Look, I can be a metaphor, too. Are you a metaphor for dried ovaries? Like, God. What do you think we're a metaphor for? Work with me, Jen. Uh, okay, I don't know. Uh, being in my head? Good guess. Ugh. Okay, so Peter David used to do stuff like this. But uh, he did it well. <laughs> I actually almost said he did it good, but someone explained something. They go, Batman does good, and he does good well. I, you're supposed to use him differently. Anyway, I like how Jessica Jones is now drawn as the least uh, attractive woman from Mad Men. Um, so uh, he would do things, go inside Bruce's mind, symbolic battles. The Green Hulk symbolizes his, you know, frustrated rage, the... the uh, Grey Hulk is more of like his um, adult frustrations. You'd see them battling over a door. What's behind the door? These are really good stories by, written, drawn by Dale Keown. Literally, the symbolism is she's in her head too much, so she's just a floating head. 
and then she guesses it right on the first time. So then she's like, hello, Mia's Hulk. I'm not talking to you right now, and you can't talk back because you're a body with no head. Ha! And then it looks like it's like a hitchhiking thing, and then she goes, oh, that's nice, real mature. I just gave myself an obscene gesture. That's, that's not, first of all, I haven't seen anyone do that obscene gesture since like 1985. It's more of an East Coast thing. Second of all, you're not doing it right at all. So then she goes and sits on a couch with herself, in which she just spurgs out and yells, which I think is supposed to be like cute or funny. And then, uh, then they get some really deep stuff. They're like, I'm afraid. You're afraid of everything. And then they just, they're literally the most obvious points for everything. Oh, then she grows. Oh, do you remember uh, Thanos who almost killed her? Well, guess what? She believes in herself just like that shrimp boat in uh, Black as Fuck, America's Sweetheart. I tore you apart. Ha! You just knocked me down is all. You didn't break me. You just put a little hole in my chest. And then she knocks him out with one punch. I'll still break you into little itty bitty pieces. Okay. Why does this sound like it was written by a five year old? Oh, see all the little pieces. Then she says, ha, this subconsciousness thing is a piece of cake. Do I get cake now? Jen, Bruce. Okay, come on. That's supposed to be Bruce freaking Banner. Why does every man have to either not exist and not be in there, be effeminate, or... I forget the other word. I'm too bothered with his crossing his legs like that. So then, uh, then they meet Hulk, and it's like... <laughs> this is stupid. Look at that transformation. It looks like trash. Uh, so then, um, what was he saying? Okay, so oh, we get a cross... Oh, yeah, big panel. Oh, this is certainly symbolic. I could have saved you. I could have tried. I could have killed you too. If you knew me, you knew this is how it would end. You made this happen. You gave up. You knew it had to end. I had to end. This was the only ending there was going to be. I wasn't ready. I woke up and you were gone. Wait, is she talking to the Hulk or her breasts? I can't be here without you. Uh, no, it's definitely a Hulk. So then, uh, God, look at these. Yeah, that totally looks like a Marvel comic. Oh my gosh, you better not say anything. She will write a BuzzFeed article about you. Tee hee hee. By the way, I love John Malin on cable, but this artist looks super dope. Who is it? I don't know. So, whoa. Yes. Yes, you can. I miss you so much. I... I, now I think she's talking about her breasts again. Uh, so uh, then she hugs him and then she turns green. She lets him go figuratively. And then no, she's like, welcome back. Uh, yeah? Whoa. Yeah, I figured that might happen. Guess it wasn't completely subconscious or metaphorical. Oh, God, she actually looks like a woman there. This weird fish eye thing does not work. So, uh, you know, I can't show whatever. It's stupid. Anyway, um... This book sucked. It's like, when it says stuff right down here, like, to be concluded, I was like, I thought this was the end. I thought it was all over. Whoa, that's like deep symbolism, bro. It's like she's in herself inside her. It's like she's too much in her own head, man. Um, but anyway, this book sucked. I can't wait for to uh, for uh, C.B. Sobolski to sweep all this Axel Alonso era idiocy out of Marvel. <coughs> well timed cough on that one. Anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe. I gotta start. I gotta stop being lazy about the rips. Okay. Where did, there it is. Uh, oh. Steering column and okay. So anyway. Uh, thanks for watching. Subscribe. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to everyone giving to the Super Chat and the Patreon. You're funding the original content. And I'll have a bunch. I bought like eight comics. I'm going to go to the hell. The, go to hell. Go to the hotel. Do a comic. Oh, live stream tonight. 
live stream because uh, these kind of, these hotels are getting expensive. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.